This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Tamita's Mark IV male, paints from ammo of MIG Jimenez, Hobby Boss's A6E Intruder, Dragon's Black Label USS Zumwalt, and AMT's Hindenburg. Hi and welcome to another edition of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown. I'm Tim Kidwell. I'm Aaron Skinner. We're starting today with another kit of World War I armor, this time from Tamiya. It's the Mark IV male. Now, in an unusual throwback, it's motorized. Yeah, there was a time when all of Tamiya's armor kits were motorized. As a kid, it was fun to run them across the floor or over obstacles to see how tanks worked. Absolutely, it's almost unheard of now. The Mark IV was the most numerous of Britain's famous rhomboid tanks, with more than 1,200 of them built. Molded in tan plastic, the basic kit parts capture the shape well. The numerous rivets are sharply molded and under paint and washes should look terrific. The kit features a lot of tiny road wheels with different types interlocking in several configurations, so pay attention to the instructions. Both the upper plate and the sponsons are removable to service motor, gearbox, and battery. Fine parts like the unditching log rails, exhaust, and guns look scale thin. There's no interior to speak of, but the breeches of the six pounders are there. All of the machinery necessary to run the thing is included in the kit, and the instructions look easy to follow. Click together tracks give the tanks solid footing. This release includes a set of five British infantry soldiers and their equipment. Decals and painting instructions show three British Mark IVs, all in tank brown. There are also warning stickers for the motor. If you want a good looking model of this seminal tank, to me has laid a great foundation here. And if you're so inclined, you get the bonus of building it so you can let it drive around. Broom, broom. While we're on the subject of World War I, let's take a look at a couple of intriguing paint sets from Ammo of Mig Jimenez. There's French Tank Colors, a set of six acrylic paints designed for armor used from 1914 to 1940. It's perfect for the Renaults and saint Chamans that hit the market recently. The 17 milliliter bottles include pale green, warm sand yellow, French blue, pale gray, brown earth, and forest green. The front and back of the box show six examples of French camouflage with notes on the colors used. The second set is British and German camouflage colors for 1914 to 18. Six 17 milliliter bottles, one each of green moss, stone gray, brown soil, dull green, ochre earth, and brown clay. Once again, the box shows six examples with color callouts, including Mark IVs, Whippets, and an A7V. Ammo of Mig Jimenez has also released several other paint sets. Tires and tracks with six acrylic paints for coloring and weathering running gear. The back of the box shows photographs as examples. Rust Effects Colors features six shades of metal corrosion from light to dark and old. Again, the back of the box provides photos as examples and inspiration. There's a small set of colors for Africa Corps armor, including yellow-brown, sand gray, and dark gray. For aircraft, there are two sets of enamel panel washes, one for German late war fighters. It features three washes appropriate to emphasize panel lines on RLM 76 and 78, RLM 81 and 82, and RLM 83, respectively. Then we have a set of washes for natural metal finishes, including blue-black, deep gray, and deep brown. These neat sets provide one-stop shop for finishing and make special effects easy. In the last episode, I described Panavia's Tornado as looking something like a delivery truck. I think that that description could be used for the A6E Intruder, too. This is Hobby Boss's 148th scale kit. I, for one, have always liked the business-like lines and shapes of the intruder. Grumman's all-weather attacker served the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps from 1963 to 1997. Combat deployments included Vietnam, Libya, the Gulf War, and Bosnia. This kit owes much of its parts breakdown to Trumpeter's 132nd scale A6 kits. The medium gray parts have fine panel and rivet detail. The cockpit features a bunch of detail including seats, tub, controls, and instrument panels. Prominent plumbing on the panel shroud and behind the cockpit is featured. The landing gear legs are bolstered by metal cores that should give the kit firm footing. Other features include long intake and exhaust trunks terminating in fans. Optional position slats, flaps, air brakes, and spoilers. Detailed radar installation in the nose. Folded or unfolded wings with detailed connections. A ram air turbine and boarding ladders. Photo etch metal parts provide the rungs as well as other details. Four sprues provide stores for the hard points. In addition to centerline and wing fuel tanks, you get GBU-8s, 
Mark 81, 82, 20, and M117 bombs. Decals provide markings and stencils for two intruders. One is a VA-34 CAG bird aboard the USS John F. Kennedy in the 1970s. The other is a VA-42 aircraft in low vis markings. It's a good looking kit of an important aircraft and should prove popular. Our third kit today looks like something out of science fiction. It's the 1 700th scale USS Zumwalt. I bet you think this thing is ugly. It's definitely not sexy. I mean, have these guys ever heard of anything called a French curve? It's all about the stealth, man. According to the Navy, this thing is 40% bigger than the Arleigh Burke class, but has the radar signature of a fishing boat. Well, this is the first plastic kit of this new warship, and as a model, looks pretty good in the box. There are all of about 40 parts that go into the ship, including a Seahawk helicopter and Fire Scout drone for the flight deck. The radical tumble-down hull is split into halves, including the deckhouse sides. It's also split at the waterline, so it could be built that way. The hideaway guns can be open or closed. A stand is included. Decals provide hull numbers and name, as well as all of the deck markings. The only photo etch metal is the rotors and skids for the drone. If modern naval subjects are your thing, and you haven't built a ship before, the Zumwalt may be just the thing to launch a new interest. Finally, a re-release that is close to FSM editor Matt Usher's heart, AMT's 1 520th scale Hindenburg. A fan of Zeppelin's, Matt built this model when he was a youngster. Yeah, and he's already laid claim to this one as soon as it hit FSM's offices. The famous airship is mostly represented in the kit by two hull halves, uh, bag halves, en envelope halves. There's a stand with a 1 520th scale DC-3 for scale. The remaining parts include the control gondola, engines, and horizontal stabilizers. The whole thing goes together in just one step. The highlight is the decals, which feature all of the cabin windows, registration, hull names, and numbers. There are flags for the tail with broken up swastikas and Olympic rings. This kit looks like a lot of fun and it'll make a great display. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Look for detailed reviews of the Mark IV and Zumwalt in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see these and other new releases in the October issue of Fine Scale Modeler on sale September 2nd. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Tim Kidwell. We'll see you next time. Let's do it again. Three, two. <laughs> <laughs> Pregnant pause. <laughs>